Three minute chess lesson, challenge accepted. So today we're gonna to talk about improving your pieces. I see many players in a metal game, such as this one, just ignore their bad pieces. So this bishop right now is no, no more useful than another pawn. And instead of trying to improve it, many players just ignore it saying, oh, I can't go up and going down is obviously worse. Some advanced players might say, oh, there's possibility to go to h4, but then, I mean, they just move out of the way. So no real purpose there. So the one tip that you need to know is stop looking at what's available. I see this time and time again. The white player doesn't have any available options right now, so they must think, oh, I'm just going to leave this guys here and play with my rooks, with my queen, something else. But you have to stop ignoring your problems and actually deal with your problems. So now we're going to learn the proper questions to optimally improve your piece. The first question is going to be, be which piece. So when we do this, we prioritize our worst pieces and we also prioritize our minor pieces. So right now, this bishop is the first one you're going to improve because it's your worst piece by far and it's a minor piece. So that's the answer to question one. Question two is going to be where would I put it if I could put it anywhere? So if you could place this bishop anywhere on the board on a dark square, where would you place it? The answer will most likely be d6, b4, something like that. Let's say d6. And the question three is going to be how do you get there? So you have your piece, you have your end goal, and now you would notice, ideally, your multiple move process to get there. So I'm sure you've already seen bishop c1, bishop a3, bishop d6. That is how you optimally improve a piece. Instead of looking at what's available, we look at what's possible, what's the best thing we could do, and then somehow get there. Doesn't matter how many moves. So let's say we play it out. Bishop c1, they do something. Bishop a3, they do something. And now you can play bishop d6 if you want, but bishops like to be far away from the action. So I would say this bishop on a3 is equally good. And now it's, you know, not game over because you improve the piece optimally. It's time to do the same thing with another piece. So let's say this knight is also not doing much. It's just defending some pawns that don't need to be defended because they already are. So which piece? The knight. What's the end goal? Let's see some good knight squares. d6 would be very good, but we can't really get there because we can't jump to either one of the red squares. So we have to pick a different one. Let's go for uh, a6, c6, b4, or something like that. How do you get there? Well, we need to get the b4. In order to get there, you need to get the c2. Oh, there we go. Knight e1, knight c2, knight b4. So that is how you optimally improve your knight. And notice how all your pieces are much better than they would usually be. If you just ignored them in the original position, they would just stay here, do nothing. But in the end, you have significant pressure on the... Uh, enemy queen side and are looking to pawn break very soon here to open up these lines and win the game something like that <laughs> good luck and keep crushing it